Salutations, everyone. This is Razor bringing you guys another Overwatch 2 video, where today we're going to be talking about D.Va, which I believe is a very interesting character in the space that she's in, what she brought to Overwatch 1, what she brings to Overwatch 2. So she's not immediately a character that you would think, as a solo tank, would be good in Overwatch 2. And I'm not here to necessarily argue against that. It's just that what she brought to the table in Overwatch 1 was, was pretty unique and impactful that made her... A, a mainstay for the majority of the competitive lifetime of Overwatch 1, right? Uh, from the lower levels to the highest levels, she was she was viable and meta for quite a long portion of it. And in Overwatch 2, it doesn't seem like she's going to be that. We've seen her a tiny bit in Overwatch League. Uh, mostly in the APAC region, and now we're starting to see a little bit in the West here in the in the final stage of this season, but she doesn't seem to be performing consistently well. So I, I feel I feel like she she is playable. She does have a spot. She's not a throw. She's not Roadhog, right? Uh, she is definitely a lot more niche. Um, because what she brought to the table in Overwatch 1 was her, she had the defense matrix to peel as well as help out her main tank that she was supporting. Uh, no matter who it was, really, whether you were diving along with a Winston or if you were supporting uh, an Orisa or a Reinhardt. So you're mitigating the big cooldowns coming in at the shields. And you could also take high ground with her due to her jets. Uh, go after the Widows and Soldiers and Ashes of the World. She could mitigate damage from Farah and challenge her in the air. And since D.Va isn't super viable in Overwatch 2, those threats all of a sudden become giant. Because now since, l l let's, let's just say for argument's sake, that D.Va's not going to be very good. And I, I played her a little bit in the beta. I, I, I did win with her uh, two of the three games I think I played as her. Uh, because, you know, the tank queue was so long and I wanted to, you know, check out Doomfist and New Arisa and Junker Queen and stuff. So I didn't play a lot of D.Va, but I was super curious how she was going to perform. So uh, obviously I played this game of Push and they played Doomfist very poorly, which is going to be easy to punish. I also played a game... Uh, on it was uh, on payload or a hybrid on um, the New York map uh, against a Reinhardt, and we were I was just able to just outpoke him, make his shield and that play style not super great, and was able to take big advantages against it. And so I performed well, and yeah, it's it's just the beta and it's just quick play, right? But she, she's she's still going to be usable in certain circumstances, mainly depending on, I mean, uh, yes, obviously the map, but mainly depending on what the enemy tank is. If it's something like a Doom that's going to be out of position or a Wrecking Ball, maybe less so because he's more of a, uh, <laughs> he's got way more sustain or a, a Reinhardt that you can just poke out uh, or maybe an Orisa, but, you know, her long range damage is considerably better than Reinhardt's she, you're going to be able to have success with D.Va but it's not going to be consistent it's not going to be on every map it's not going to be against every enemy comp right so what D.Va was really good at and what you needed her for in Overwatch 1 all of a sudden those threats become super strong so there's going to be like a bit of a power vacuum with the off tank role eliminated and D.Va essentially only getting a tiny tiny buff to the length of her defense matrix i still don't even i'm not i don't think it's where it was at launch of overwatch one it was like eight seconds or or not launch but the the first rework um when she you were able to feather and not use it all at once although i think the time was still the same uh but regardless she did get a buff to the length of her defense matrix and in the latest patch she's getting uh a, a little bit more help as well She's just very, very vulnerable. She's easy headshots. Uh, she has the maneuverability, right? Um, and you can remech with her. So they gave us a, you know, like 12% uh, uh, less ult uh, uh, percentage-wise 
to get her mech back, which is, yeah, that's, that's helpful. That's really big because, I mean, she's the only one that can get essentially knocked out and then back into the fight, right? Um, and there's not going to be a lot of circumstances in a team fight where that is going to happen, but it's usually for, like, at the tail end of a fight that you just barely win and you're just able to get your bunny blaster out and then hopefully get your mech back uh, fairly quickly or at least, you know, by the time the second fight has really started to engage. But now that you're the only tank, that's going to be even less likely to happen. And you're going to be less consistent with that. So that, that, that that's just a small little thing that does help, but in the long run, it is not going to really make the character of D.Va any better. So you take a look at what was she really good at? What was the power of Defense Matrix? Grabbing anti-nades, right? So now that she's not going to be nearly as viable, you're not going to see nearly as much D.Va, Bionade's getting much more value, right? Because there's not going to be anything that can eat it. You know, maybe you can block it with the Zarya bubble, uh, but, you know, best case circumstances, you're, you're just blocking that for yourself. It's still going to get the splash damage off of it, right? Um, you take a look at FAR rockets or the, uh, the, the Echo um, alternate fire uh, and the sticky bombs. Those those are great and relatively easy for e for Diva to stop, right? Because they were slow projectiles and they were in the air, and she has enough time to get the defense matrix out as well as challenge people in the air. And without Diva, we're not going to have that. So Far and Echo are going to be way stronger. Moira tossing out her orb. You know, maybe they're changing it at launch. We still haven't gotten any word about that, even though they've mentioned other changes that will happen at launch. But we know Moira's going to get some changes, and they tested the necrotic orb thing, but. At the very least, what we have presently, her damage orb, that's easy for D.Va to stop. But now, that's just free ult charge for Moira, and Coalescence is, I think, stronger than it ever was before in the 5v5. And Soldier, or uh, Flanking McCree, or Ash on high ground. It was really easy for me to go as D.Va and just stop those hard carries from happening that my DPS are ignoring, right? It's like, ah, oh, soldier on the high ground, they're just going to ignore it and shoot the enemy tank, right? Well, I can't be D.Va nearly as often and stop that soldier from dominating high ground or, you know, getting to that Torb turret or what have you. So I, I think the, the DPS role is going to be a lot more freer with there being less D.Va, although she, I think she is playable. She will find a spot at times, you're just not, no, no matter how good you are as D.Va, you're not going to be able to play her nearly as much as you would like to. And I don't see a big meta shift changing that uh, for anything, uh, you know, below like Grandmasters, even if that ever happens. Just because we've seen a little bit of D.Va in Overwatch League gives me a little bit of hope that it, we could see at the highest levels. But I don't see it making much more of an impact below that consistently. So let me know what you think about D.Va or any other tank and how the 5v5 is going to change their pick rate. Zarya is also in a similar situation, but she can be picked on a bit more uh, maps and situations as well because those bu those multi-bubbles are going to be more useful than just a single defense matrix that can only last, you know, eight seconds.